This next section is about do not let anyone destroy God's plan for us. So we just talk about God's plan and people can destroy God's plan in our lives if we let them. But we don't have to let them destroy God's plan in our life. Our lives are very precious. Now this is from the last section that that uh, all the days ordained for my life were written in God's book and then it's all precious thoughts and then all people have sins so we don't expect them to have real love now here I talk about how not to be affected by people we notice that many people around us can hurt people easily can get angry easily can be frustrated with people compete with people accuse people I'm sure that you found many people like that and so one thing we want to do if we want to enter God's perfect plan is not to let any of this affect us. Not to let any negative person to affect our spiritual life, to affect the perfect plan in our life. John 2, 24 But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of men for he knew what was in men. So Jesus did not commit himself to them. He did not let people guide him. He did not let his mother guide him. He did not let his brothers guide him. He did not let his disciples guide him. Even though these people are Christians, but he did not let them guide him because he is God. He is perfect. So he did not commit to them. He did not find a manager for him. Because he knew all men. He knew that all men have problems, have sins and had no need that anyone should testify of men for he knew what was in men. He doesn't need anyone to tell him, oh, men have sinned. He doesn't need anyone to tell him because he knew that men have sins. So he doesn't commit themselves. He doesn't trust him, his life to the people. He just trusts his life and trusts his life to God, the Father. He does not entrust his life to people. So he knew that people cannot really do better things in his life than God the Father. Now for us, of course we all are blessed by the people around us. We want to thank God and thank these people for the goodness they've done to us. We want to thank God and thank them for, the, for those things. But we still don't let them take over our lives. We let God take over our life. We don't commit our lives to anyone. We don't let anyone be our master except God Himself. So I hope that we'll, see, we'll say, my life belongs to God and nobody has any right to take my life from, from God. Now, many wives, they, they put the whole life into the hand of the, of the husband. They entrust their life to the husband. And what happened is they, uh, when the husband dies or when the husband uh, divorce them, and then they lose hope. They say, there's no hope in life. My husband has left me. I have no husband. And they think that the husband is the one to trust. Now we, you know, it's right for a wife to trust the husband. But eventually it's God whom we trust. People can only help us to a certain extent and people can disappoint us. So we don't entrust our life even to the closest person. We only entrust our life to God Himself. So we first understand this, then we won't be affected so much by people. There are so many people they say, oh my parents treat me badly, my spouse treat me bad badly, my friends treat me badly, or my pastor treat me badly, my Christian friends treat me badly. Now it can happen, but we don't want to affect it by them because we know that we all have sin, including ourselves. We have sin too. So we don't let ourselves guide us because we will make wrong choices. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So a heart is deceitful. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's cheating, it's lying above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So we cannot entrust people totally or entrust ourselves. Now, 
in the world, in the church, we have to entrust people with certain things. I mean, we cannot, uh, you know, have zero uh, trust in people. We cannot say, well, uh, I, I cannot give you any money to buy the food. We have to entrust the person uh, because, uh, you know, that we can entrust certain amount of money with people and we can let them do, you know, take over some work we delegate to them. We give them responsibility. It's right. But we don't entrust the whole ministry to someone before we know that they are trustworthy. We don't entrust uh, our lives to certain people before we know them very well. And we finally, we trust, trust in God only. Because people would fail us in a number of ways. Now, it doesn't mean we don't have friends that we trust. We have friends that we trust. We can communicate with them. We can talk with them. And that trust depends on the relationship. There are some people who are more trustworthy that we can tell them about our secrets. And there are people we cannot tell the, them our secrets because if you tell them the secrets, they will spread it to people. So it depends on what secret it is and, and whom you uh, tell uh, whom you tell the person. So we, we need to tell the right person. We trust the right person. And each person, there's a different level of trust, but, but nobody, we have 100% trust except God. And Psalm 1186, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? So the Lord is with me, is for me. He helps me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals, pe people who die, what can they do to me? So I don't trust my life to them. I just trust in God. God is for me. I will not be afraid. And Romans 8.31, if God is for us, who can be against us? So nobody can take away all the blessings from us. So we, we say, it doesn't matter. I, should, I don't have to be afraid of people. They, don't, they cannot take away uh, the good things from my life. God bless Joseph even when his brothers try to harm him. God has a wonderful plan. Now, Joseph was sold by his brothers to Egypt. Humanly speaking, it looks like they have ruined his life. But when he trusts in God, nobody can ruin his life. His brothers could not ruin his life. Because in Egypt, God raised him up to be the minister of, the, of Egypt. So that's God's plan. God has a wonderful plan that nobody can break. So I hope that we all trust in God and say, people cannot take away God's plan if we don't let them take uh, away the good things from God. Now, how do we let them take the good things from God? When we get angry because of them, when we are affected by them, when we are unhappy, we lose strength and lose hope because of people, then we let them steal from us. But when people steal from us, when, then we say, I trust in God. It doesn't matter what He has done to me. It doesn't matter. He cannot steal anything from me. If I trust in God, God will give it back to me. So Genesis 39.2, The Lord was with J Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. So the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Now Joseph was sold by his brothers to Egypt. He did not know the Egyptian language. So when he went there, he, he was alone and he did not know the language. But he learned the language very quickly because of the wisdom of God. And the Lord blessed Joseph because the Lord would, was with him, because he has a close relationship with God. And the Lord was with him and then God prospered him. So his brothers try to harm him, but they cannot because when he trusts in God, and have a close relationship with God, nobody can steal from Him. So I hope that we all understand this. Our spouse cannot steal from us. Now, there are many women who say, my husband is not nice, nice to me, so I'm very unhappy, I'm very angry, I'm very frustrated, I am sad, I am hurt, I'm, I've lost everything. They think they have lost everything. But if they have strength from the Lord, they can have joy even after the husband yell at them. They just turn around and say, God loves me. It doesn't matter what He says to me. Uh, it doesn't affect me. 
what is said or is in the air has gone away. I don't have to take it seriously. I can just uh, delight in God. Now, this is not easy to learn, but this is what God has taught me. I thank God that He has taught me this through years of suffering. Many people has, have hurt me, but I, God has taught me not to be affected by people. And then I learned this, and then I apply it in my life. What happened was, uh, this happened like this, that God taught me the process. I just show you how God taught me. After I experienced the Holy Spirit, I was very excited. It changed my relationship with God. I spent a long time praying to God, and I enjoy God. And I, when I pray for people, many people experience the Holy Spirit, and they experience change, and their whole life is changed. And I raised up a number of people to serve God, and then God gave me teachings more and more. And I share with someone on the phone about my experience, but the person did not accept the work of the Holy Spirit, and she yelled at me, she was angry, and, uh, and then she hung up the phone. And then I was unhappy. And then I found that, because before that, whenever I pray, I can experience God's joy. And then at that time when I pray, I found that I lose the joy. I cannot have joy. My heart was under pressure. So I thought what I should do. I said, okay, at least I apologize. But I did not do anything wrong. So what I did was I called her again and I said, if I made you unhappy, I'm sorry about that. So I just say, I didn't say I did wrong. I just say, if I made you unhappy, I'm sorry. But then she was still angry and then she hung up the phone again. And then and then the Lord gave me this idea. I have already handled the problem. I have already tried to handle and I have forgiven the person. I have let it go. I have already handled. So let it go and do not be affected by it. And from now on, when anyone or anything affects you, take care of it like that. When you handle it, then you let go. Don't have to think about it anymore because you are already trying to handle it. You just trust in God and God will bless you. So when I trust in God, I have the joy again. So that time, that experience stay in my heart. Whenever anyone, anything happened, anyone did anything to me, and I found that it affects me, I would take care of it right away. And then I found that I can handle the problem and not to be affected by the people or by anything. And so I wrote the book, Joyful Victory, which I hope I will translate into English soon. And actually, the PDF I send you, it's, uh, it has uh, a, a lot of teaching from uh, Joyful Victory already, so, so you're free to use it. So if anyone wants it, you can send an uh, email to me and then I can uh, send it to you. And then in Genesis 50 verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So Joseph said to his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended for good. Even though all these things, you are trying to hurt me, but God wanted these things to do good, to, to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives, and not only saving of many lives, but to raise up the Israelites in Egypt as a great people. And one day they come out from Egypt and then uh, to restore their nation uh, in Canaan. So that was the plan of God through the person of Joseph because of his trust in God, his relationship with God, that he has just... Uh, that he uh, does not let his brothers affect him. He does not let his brothers affect him. And that's why he can enter God's perfect plan. Okay? So don't put trust in people. Now, we trust, we trust people to a certain extent. We can trust people with a certain amount of money. We trust people to entrust them to do certain things. We can entrust people to do certain things. But we don't entrust our lives to them. We don't say, okay, be uh, my manager. Manage my whole life. We don't let people do that. Now, we can let people help us. For instance, uh, if someone wants to help me how to spread 
my teaching to different countries. I'm happy to have someone help me. If the person loves God and has good plans to do it, I'm happy to, to have someone help me spread this teaching to more countries. I'm happy to have someone help me doing that. That is entrusting certain parts of our life to people. But I don't entrust my whole ministry to that person. The whole ministry came from God, from His direction. And God has told me to spread this to more people because this is very urgent to prepare more people for the last day. So I will, I will uh, follow God's plan. I will follow God's plan to apply it, uh, to spread it to more people. And I can and trust certain people to help me spread this ministry. Psalm 146.3 Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. So do not trust in princes. Uh, now we can entrust them with certain responsibilities, but we don't put our trust in them. So don't put your whole trust in your spouse, in your pastors. Now we should trust our pastor, but we don't entrust our whole lives to our pastor. It's God who guides us. The pastor can guide us to a certain extent, but it's finally it's God who guides us. So we don't let anyone to take over the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So we see that people would die, you know, they go from uh, uh, fertilized egg all the way, all the way up, and then they go, one day they would die. But there are godly people, and there are ungodly people. There are people who love God, and there are people who don't love God much. And there are people who dislike God. And for people who love God, we can entrust more. We can cooperate with them more. So whenever I cooperate with someone, that person has to be loving God and following God. If I find that the person is not loving God, not following God, then I will not cooperate with them. I have to work with trustworthy people. Because unworthy, you know, not trustworthy, people who are not trustworthy can ruin the ministry and can ruin the reputation. We don't want people to ruin the reputation. Okay, so we want not to be affected by people. This is very important. Do not be anxious because of wicked people. Psalm 37 verse 7, But still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways. When they carry out their wicked schemes, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. So be still before the Lord. Stay still, relax, be calm. Especially when we pray, Oh Lord Jesus, thank you Lord, you love us so much. I can relax in you, I can be calm in you. Thank you Jesus. So we become still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. To wait on the Lord means that we will think about the Lord, we'll meditate on the Lord, we can meditate on His Word, we can meditate on his presence, Lord, thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And then we can relax and wait on the Lord and let the Lord speak to us and guide us. Now, sometimes we may not necessarily hear any direction, but we just concentrate in the Lord and enjoy Him and trust in Him and delight in God and then God will work in our life so we want to wait patiently for God and do not fret do not be anxious do not be angry when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes refrain from anger and turn from wrath do not fret it leads only to evil so when we are anxious when we are angry frustrated because of people it will only lead to evil so we don't want to stay in anger Whenever anyone affects us, we want to take care of that right away. Let me share with you one experience of mine. Years ago, there was one person that I knew that did not believe in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And then one day he took me and a pastor and he wanted to accuse me of something because he did not... Uh, believe in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So he did not believe in my 
that my ministry is good. And then he accused me in front of another pastor. Now this pastor is a person who introduced him to me. And uh, so listen to this person. And I figure out that he was, he did not accept the work of the Holy Spirit. And he did not, it's not easy to convince him at that point. So he kept talking, accusing me. And I sat there, I listened to him. And I figure out it's hard to change him. So I don't, I did not intend to change him. I just listened to him. And I even forgot what I said afterwards. I could have said, thank you, God bless you. Uh, the pastor might told us to pray together and then we pray together and then he walked away. He went away. And then this pastor said to me, Pastor, you, you're really great. When he said all these things accuse you, you were not angry at all. You were totally calm. I said, that's because of this teaching of joyful victory. I, I don't want to be affected by people when they have problems. I just stay calm. It, it doesn't matter what he says. It's not going to affect my life. So I just stay calm. But this person felt very bad. And later he get me and the pastor together. And, and, uh, and then he apologized to me. And, and I, I, I even uh, recently, I, I remember this and I talked to that pastor and I said, if he wants to, I can, you know, talk with him again to help him to feel good. Don't worry. It's all over. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect me. So I have made up my mind since the experience I told you, that phone call. Whenever anyone affects me, if it's not my fault. Now, it's, if it's my fault, I will admit my fault and ask for forgiveness. If it's not my fault, I can still apologize for making the person unhappy or whatever that I can say. And I would just be calm and peaceful and then don't let it affect me. And that's, I have made up my mind to live like that so that nobody can take away my peace and joy because without the peace and joy, I cannot uh, go higher and higher in God's plan. If I'm, un, you know, I'm uh, unhappy and affected by people and angry, I cannot have that joy. I want to have that joy all the time. And I thank God for the joy. So I hope that we would work hard on restoring the peace and the love and the joy of the Lord and enjoy His presence all the time that we don't give this up because of anyone. It doesn't matter what they say to us. It's not going to kill us. So I hope we can apply this. So what people say just stays in the air for one second. It just stays in the air for one second, for less than one second. We don't have to take their negative words seriously. And God will bless us, bless me when I obey God. And so we clear that negative words from our mind and fill ourselves with God's word. So we don't have to take the negative words seriously. We don't have to take um, We don't have to take anyone's negative words seriously. And God will bless me when I obey Him. When I obey Him, He will bless my whole life. And I can clear all the negative words from my mind and fill ourselves with God's word. So I won't let anyone take away any good thing from me. So the key point here is to clear the garbage. When people yell at us, we clear the garbage. We don't let anyone affect us. At the same time, we bless the person. Now clear all the garbage from people and ourselves, from ourselves too. How people hurt us and criticize us and criticize us. How they hurt us and criticize us. We want to clear those things. How we dislike and despise ourselves. If we dislike ourselves and, and look down upon ourselves. So this is from us. How we criticize ourselves and have no hope. Sometimes we criticize ourselves and say, I'm no good, I cannot do it, uh, it's terrible. So all these things we want to put down. So And then we fill ourselves with God's word and love. So when we f feel sad or angry, we want to clear the garbage. All the sad feeling, all the hurtful feeling, all the anger, we want to clear all those. And God has given me these five steps to victory. 
remember these keywords Re aware be aware of how we are affected by people so when we are affected by people be aware of that and believe that when we are affected by people is destructive so it is destructive it, it, it would destroy our life and apply biblical principle to the problem so what what does the Bible tell me to do the Bible tell me not to be afraid of wicked people not to be not to fret because of them and to bless people and then for pray for to have forgiveness and strength so I'll ask God to forgive me if I'm affected by people and have strength and then choose to obey God so we can overcome sins by stopping the sinful thoughts before they become action so whenever we find that we are affected by people we can stop this thought when we are affected by people we say I don't want to be affected by people I want to restore this joy and then we don't have to be affected by people so stop it as soon as we can so this five step to victory aware destructive biblical principle pray choose to, uh, or obey so aware of the problem is destructive uh, when we are affected by people Bible pray obey so if I apply it like someone just yelled at you and then be aware that oh I'm affected by the person I'm unhappy and then uh, believe that the unhappiness is destructive so a prime biblical principle is that I do not have to be affected by people because people are sinful I don't have to take the negative words and uh, now if I have certain problem if it's my pride that I cannot uh, accept the suggestions then it's me who, who I want to uh, pray for forgiveness and repent of our sins and then pray Lord for, for, forgive me and give me strength and choose to obey choose not to be affected by a person and choose to say positive words choose to say nice words to the person okay and then even when we go through difficult times God is with us so believe that he's with us all the time Psalm 23 4 even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me so even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death even when we go through the most difficult times I will fear no evil nobody no situation can take away the goodness of God even when we are persecuted one day or even put to prison or even some people are trying to kill us that we say it doesn't matter if I die because my life belongs to God if I die I, I'm glorifying God and I continue to tell people about Jesus and then they kill us and I, I can go to heaven I don't have to uh, be affected by them so whatever happens to me I will fear no evil because God is pleased with me and that's most important because he has everything in his hand and he has the ability to save me out from the difficult situation he can take me out like the angel took Peter out from prison and your rod and your staff they comfort me so the rod of guidance and the staff to to uh, beat the sheep so the the guidance and then the discipline of God they all comfort me because it's God who guides me and then now we want to love people now at the same time we don't we don't want to be affected by people but we want to love people we don't want to say I just forget about people we want to care about them we want to do good things to them Romans 13 8 owe no one anything except to love one another for he who loves another has fulfilled the law so we don't owe anything anyone anything except to love one another always to love them and when we love one another we have fulfilled the law so we want to obey the law and then this is an encouragement that God has given me if we improve by 1% a day we can improve much in 100 days keep encouraging ourselves now very often people say oh this person affects me I'm unhappy uh, he takes he took away things from me and then we say it's hard but if we improve a little bit okay today I'm not so angry because of him today I can pray afterwards today I can let go I can relax then I'm 
improve. Now, sometimes it's much more than 1%, but I'm saying even if we improve a little bit, I can start to pray for him. I can start to pray for myself. I have already improved. Then we can be happy and say uh, congratulations to ourselves and applaud ourselves for improving. That way, we are always positive. Now, some people say, I'm still affected by him. But if you look at the day before, if we have improved already, then we say, I have improved. So I can congratulate myself. I can applaud myself because I've improved. So look at the improvement instead of looking at what we haven't done yet. There are things that we cannot improve right away, but at least we can improve some. There are still certain things we cannot take care of, but we want to look at the things we can take care of, and then we can thank God for that. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So anything good, including from ourselves, when we have improved, when we listen to God, obey God, and try to improve when we repent of our sins and ask God to help us, we have improved. Whenever we have improved, we say, God, thank you, I have improved today. And, but we, we are not proud. We don't want to be proud. We want to be thankful. God is you. We give glory to God. It's God is you that has helped me. And I thank God that I'm obeying God and I'm changing. So we can say, I'm improving and be happy. It's not pride. It's saying my change came from God and I'm happy that God is changing me and I'm following God's change. So it's not wrong to say that I have obeyed God, but we're not proud of it. We're just saying, I thank God I'm following God's guidance. So encourage ourselves by, for any improvement, any improvement we want to thank God. Okay. Now here are the questions. So first, is there anything you want to ask? Because there is only half an hour left now. I can, uh, or we can have a five minutes break because I can have a long break. The reason is uh, we have to stop at eight here. So, um, okay, do you want to, you want to stop for five minutes and now we start uh, right away and then <coughs> And then you can think of questions you want to ask. How to handle certain people's problem. When someone yells at you, when someone is unhappy with you, when you have problematic relationship with people, how can you handle it? So we stop for five minutes and then I'll restart. Okay? God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 